Hello, hello, hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. If this is your first time joining, then hello and welcome to the Foy Hive. My name is Foy and I'll be your YouTuber for the day. And today I'm doing a sit down Q&A video, my first one of 2020 and my first one in a while actually. So I asked you guys to ask me anything basically on Instagram and I'm going to be going through these questions and answering them right now so if you want to know a little bit more about me what i'm doing what i'm up to for the year and things like that then just keep watching so before we get any further just remember to give us a like drop a comment quickly and hit that subscribe button hit it it's super quick it's super easy it's easier than blocking your ex on instagram and twitter i promise you you will not regret it okay so as you can see i'm already fully made up i was thinking about doing this as a get ready with me but then that would literally be like three hours long because your girl can talk i'm not very good at multitasking and when I multitask the quality of the material decreases so I thought let me just let me just come here fully ready fully made and then let's answer the questions so the first one is a question I won't lie I'm kind of sick of hearing and it's basically why don't you move to Johannesburg and you know when you grew up somewhere and you're not ready to go back to that place or you're not ready to live there because you kind of hate it and you only like it because you don't live there that's how I feel about Joburg right now. That's my relationship towards the city. I love it with all my heart, but I'm just not ready to live there permanently. Like, if you've lived in Joburg, especially as a child and especially then again as an adult, you know it's a very, it's, it's a hectic vibe. And if you've lived in Cape Town, you know that the vibe is completely different. And right now, at this point in my life, I think I'm still in very much Cape Town type of life. And I'm not ready to go back to Jova, but maybe next year, maybe 2022, maybe at the end of this year, who knows? God plans. So I'm keeping it open. I'm not averse to living in Joburg. I just feel like I'm not ready to live there right now. But I do go up there quite frequently, especially this year. I feel like I'm going to be up there a lot. So if you do want to film and hang out and stuff, I can do that. But like in terms of all the time situation, it's just not realistic right now. Best advice for soon to be graduates. Whew, I think my advice would be don't wait until you're about to graduate to start preparing to graduate and I say this in the sense that life comes at you very very fast and you need to have laid some foundations before you get to to where everything is happening before you graduate and like move into that world you need to be prepared for it in some way shape or form and that means doing internships doing during your vac time, buffing up your CV, like gaining extra skills, being a part of society, taking up leadership roles. You need to you need to be doing things and you need to have done things. And then also don't wait until you're right about to leave varsity to start looking for job opportunities. Because so many of these, especially if you want to work at a big corporate company, a lot of their recruitment programs start like in the beginning, middle of the year. So you really do need to keep your eyes open and you need to be ready to make a few sacrifices for like the long game, especially depending on the career that you want. And you need to make sure that you kind of define what the next chapter of your life looks like. Because if you don't define it, it will be, the decisions will be taken out of your hand and you're going to end up more unhappy than if you were to just make some choices. Like I said, more unhappy on purpose because life has a way of just doing the most anyway but if you at least took some ownership and control of the situation it helps you prepare and adjust a little bit easier so congrats on graduating first of all but like that's that's what i would say to some graduates just prepare before you even get to the finish line like start planning start thinking start doing your research start like acquiring skills and thinking about what you want to do how is 2020 um i'm online 2020 has been up and down it's been i'm grateful because it's been a really good season of provision for me um but it's also just been a lot emotionally and it's also a bit up in the air and i'm just tired i feel like i am i have not rested properly so like because i worked throughout december on new year's i was working like i'm tired a girl's tired and i feel like i haven't had any downtime even when i went to Joburg to have downtime i worked so i'm like tired but it's good. How do you deal with heartbreak that de that feels like depression? Triggered. Um, I feel. I think that the best way to deal with it is to treat it like it was depression and do all of the things that you would do if you were in a depressive episode. So it's so the things like you practice your self care, you write your affirmations, you take things one day at a time, and you just like have to work through the hurt until you can heal. Like you really just have to 
be patient, be kind, and just do the best that you can every single day until you feel okay. And it won't be quick, so just like a depressive episode, waves can hit you, things can be okay, and then they dip back down. But like, you just have to, you just have to move through it. You just have to move. We move. Okay, the next one. How do I navigate the corporate and working space being an immigrant? Is this a challenge? <sniffs> Honey, sweetie, baby. Oh. Yes! <laughs> yes! Yes! It sucks! Because, like, I've said many times before that, like, xenophobia isn't just a thing that happens in the townships. It, it, isn't, it isn't just, like, riots in the streets. It is to its core an institution at an institutional level. You do feel it in every single area of your life, especially job hunting, um, especially because there are programs such as BEE in place to uplift um, South Africans, previously disadvantaged people, which are great initiatives, but like note that you, no matter how long you've been here, you will always be at the back end of that procedure, at that process. You will not really benefit. You will be sidelined. You will be denied jobs. You will have to jump through 20 million hoops. You will have to perform. And it's really just, it's exhausting, it's tiring. It's not fun at all. But like, at this stage, it is what it is. And it doesn't really get better when you're a citizen. But like, it is what it is. Um, and I understand why it is what it is, but like, it's still, it still is a bit snarks and it, does, and it still does hurt from time to time. And it still does suck. But like, that's, that's life you know what i'm saying the next one are some basic questions how old am i i'm 23 i'm turning 24 on the 30th of march don't forget yes i'm a 1996 baby um am i single or taken i am alive by the grace of god and that's all that matters my current job i am a freelance writer makeup artist content creator social marketer all of those nice beautiful fluffy words but yes i do youtube instagram makeup all of those things full-time i do not have like a corporate office nine to five that's the situation but i do freelance um and i still write and do social media management and things like that as well so when i say things like i was working on december 31st that's what i was doing that's what i've been doing and that's why i'm tired all the time because jobs like that they don't you don't have like off times you don't have like weekends it's all time every day but yeah that's what i do my highest paid job from a brand hmm honest to god i'm not in that situation where i make a ton of money from brand partnerships but like when i was working with bernini i did make a pretty coin and when i was working with darling i did make quite a bit as well so there were some really fun people to work with and some really great people to work with because they saw your value and they didn't question it they didn't try and negotiate it with you they were just like cool let's work so i really appreciated that and i really enjoyed working with them for that when did you know you wanted to be in the beauty industry? How did I, how did I get in? <sighs> well, I always kind of knew that I wanted to be in like the fashion and beauty world. Like I always wanted to be in magazines um, and like, I wanted to be a fashion designer at one stage, but then I realized I was just like, girl, please. But like, I've always wanted to be a part of like marketing digital media, but like not the serious, <laughs> serious side. I wanted to be in like the fashion creative aspect. Um, and then beauty kind of was born out of, I got into beauty blogging because I started taking an interest in beauty at the same time that I started realizing that fashion blogging was really expensive. We had reached a point in time where it became like newness was constantly required of fashion bloggers and you had to turn out content that was getting expensive and like you had to turn it out fast and it just wasn't realistic for a varsity student, but beauty, I could film in my room. Um, and then I started getting really, really into it and into makeup and learning how to do makeup for myself, for others, and then writing about it and things like that. So I kind of, it was kind of like an organic progression, but I've always known that I wanted to be in this side of life and in this world. And I'm just thankful that it's happening. It's happening for me one way or another. What happened between me and my boo? Um... Okay, so I've gotten a few of these type of questions, and let me just say this. If you follow me on Twitter, and you've seen me go wishing live jive on the timeline, you should take two things from that situation. Number one, you should be able to figure out what's going on. And number two, if you can't figure out what's going on, you should know that it's none of your business. But like, on the real, life is weird, things are weird, 
nothing is cute but we move we move what's 2020 looking like right now any goals i'd like to smash 2020 is like i said it's been very weird but i'm still gleefully optimistic about it because i feel like a lot of things can happen for me and i have the ability to i have a lot of more free reign and i think that's exciting for me um i would like to travel and i'm going to travel inshallah i mean i'm going to bali in october november and i would like to visit nigeria in in the middle of the year and like if i can sneak in a trip to the u.s I would love to do that but this is all just like god willing financials prevailing so please watch my ads and follow me on instagram <laughs> we gotta get that sh money ish popping but like i really want to travel more and i want to save a lot more and i just want to create i want to i want to build a lot more long lasting relationships with brands like i'd like to work with brands more on a consistent basis which is having a slow start for me right now this year but i'm still very hopeful and optimistic that it's going to pick up and things will happen for the gal someone said that they wear glasses should they even bother with false lashes she likes to look but she doesn't want to struggle to be honest i wear glasses too but on the days where i wear falsies i forego my eyesight like i literally just i choose we either go see or we're gonna be seen and i choose to be seen um but you can wear falsies with glasses you just have to get shorter ones like this style is dream by um um tandy gama so obviously you can't wear the omg which is the dramatic so you have to get shorter ones but and you also have to probably wear your glasses a little bit lower so it is possible but like it's not ideal but you really just have to get more natural and shorter styles or just wear contacts for the day or just pray that you don't have to read anything or see anything to be honest um but i think there are other people who have done more like detailed hardware falsies and glasses at the same time but from personal experience i know that i have to wear my glasses really low or i just have to choose do i like or dislike surprises i love surprises i love surprises because i like being thought of and i like being gifted like gifts is one of my top um love languages and i like the thought of someone planning something for me because they know that i'm gonna like it like it's that thoughtfulness and the effort that i really appreciate so i love surprises i want to be surprised every day of my life in a good way don't like we have to be specific i like being surprised in a good way um how do i keep my curls in my braids for so, for so long okay so number one i don't do anything like they just stay these this is the darling one million braid fiber so my lovely braiding lady jackie she does my hair and she literally she does the twists she puts them into lots of little sections of plaits then we treat then we cure it in the hot water cure it treat it set it we set it in the hot water these curls are different to the curls that i had before because they're a little bit looser and that's because i didn't leave the the plaits in for as long i literally took these out like 20 minutes after i had them done because i had to go outside but like the other time i literally kept them for like a day plus and that really really kept the curls and those curls were like vibrant and buoyant for like six weeks so once you set them well the curl will stay when you wash your hair and stuff you can just replat it just to get a little bit of like you know a little curl back but like it will stay it will stay um someone wants me to talk more about my struggles after graduation especially finding work etc who so when i graduated i graduated my graduation was conferred last year in april but i graduated i finished my degree in december 2018 and I was like, I was going through the most because I could not find a job. I was being taken up down for a ride. Like I just could not find a job and I was really doing the most for my self esteem. And it really made me like stressed and depressed because I just couldn't find a job. Like how was I supposed to support myself? How was I supposed to live? You know what I'm saying? Um, so I, it was a very, very trying time for me. Um, but like during that time, I also went home to Joburg. I was with my parents. I kept like my support system around me because I needed all of the encouragement and like help and love that I could get. Um, and I spent a lot of time just trying to like keep myself sane while I looked for a job. Job hunting is the most terrible experience in the world. It is soul crushing. It is like heartbreaking especially if you were like a precocious child who excelled at things and like not things fell into your lap but like when you worked things happened for you you know what i'm saying so when you're going through an experience where you're working and it's not working like it really just throws you for a loop 
Um, but like I literally, I was on every single website every single day. I was on LinkedIn, Indeed, Careers24, that other one. I, w I signed up to basically everything. I searched and I applied and I widened my scope and I narrowed my scope and I like I looked and looked and looked but I think in my experience my favorite job website is Indeed. I really like them and I really like the interface but I also looked at companies where I would like to work and then I reached out to them and I checked their listings because sometimes when they don't check like the portals as often so sometimes it's easier to contact them directly and like use your networks guys that's why I'm also like before you graduate it's important to go to those networking evenings and join those societies and make those connections because those connections really do come through for you a lot like if you just ask a friend at a company do you have do they have availabilities then they can forward you an email and that helps it's so much easier to get your foot in the door when someone's already opened the door right so like definitely make use of networks networking is so important i want to say linkedin is a great tool for networking but to be honest i don't do linkedin well i don't understand linkedin that well i'm not very good at it everyone who even my like peers and stuff they're so good at making those posts and i'm just like i posted on instagram today and i got this many likes amazing like i don't understand how to be good at linkedin yet and i'm still getting there but if you do do it do linkedin well it helps my fave spots to hang out in Cape Town um I definitely need to branch out a lot more but like I do like um I do like as everyone you can't dislike yours truly I feel like even though like it's not the best and it's not great it's yours truly it's there um and unfiltered is a new-ish spot that's also become really nice especially for black folks in Cape Town unfiltered is great and then also I love souk I really enjoy souk. Milk and honey is a really, I can't even hold my fingers properly. Milk and honey is a really great place to hang out with. I'm a fan of Cubana just for vibes. It's cheap. The Claremont one is quiet. The Greenpoint one gets lit. But like that's generally where I go for like vibes. Those are the places where I'll likely be. Um, yeah. Um, am I a self-taught makeup artist? I am self-taught and school taught. I went to House of Tara International Makeup School in Nigeria. But I was also and i kind of still am teaching myself but yeah i feel like schools there's a lot of pressure to go to a school and i feel like you should kind of but you don't need to if you want to go to a school and you can go to a school go to a school but there's nothing wrong with not going to a school you can gain a lot of skills you can get a lot of networks and experience from just doing the work what was in my kit when I began so like I said I went to school and they helped me stock up on a lot of things but I also did have like personal makeup collection at the time and I also had like palettes 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 are your lifesavers so I had foundation shades from House of Tara in Nigeria um, I had concealers from LA Girl like Switch Beauty and Morphe eyeshadow palette, Yardley powders, the br my brush sets I got from AliExpress and from the school, lipsticks and stuff from NYX from like press drops. I just put a lot of my press drop stuff in my kit. Loose glitters, glue, liquid liners, powder palettes, powder palettes, guys, blush palettes, like cream concealer palettes palettes are life-saving and space saving i highly recommend them yeah just things like that but your kits you never start with a full kit ever ever and don't try to start with a full kit you grow your kit you expand you expand your color ranges and everything as you go but you definitely do need a place to start with but just don't put too much pressure to have a complete kit from the get-go if you know what i'm saying would i ever want to be an influencer damn if i'm getting that question then i wonder what the hell i'm doing here that pretty much draws all of these questions and answers to a close. I'm sorry if I spoke very fast. I didn't want to make this a super, super long video, but I hope that you enjoyed my answers. I hope you learned something and got to know me a little bit better. Let me know if you want to ask anything else in the comments. I'll respond and get back to you. Um, but yeah, thank you so much for watching. I will check you guys in the next video.